Well, greetings YouTube. On this podcast, I'm once again reviewing the premiere of another brand new show. It seems like 2011 is the year of new shows. It could just be my perspective, but hey. Uh, this week, of course, we're checking out Hell on Wheels, the new Western series coming out from AMC. Uh, premiering right after The Walking Dead, which is a pretty good back-to-back. Both shows are very tonally the same, so they do make very good complementary pieces for a two-hour block of television. Uh, although, uh, eventually, I th- I'm not sure how long this season is. I could look it up, but eh, I'm being lazy. Uh, I guess at some point, one show will be showing and the other won't. But hey, for now, for the time being, you got a two-hour block of shows that are very much the same. If you like Walking Dead, you're probably going to like Hell on Wheels, and vice versa. Uh, overall, what do I think of the pilot? Well, actually, I should give a quick background. It looks like the the show actually is following a whole cadre of characters here, uh, which is making figuring out what the overall plot is a little difficult. It's basically, you know, it's about the railroad in the 1860s, right after the Civil War, all the various actors that are building it, as well as the social factors of the day, the end of slavery, the, the coming together of the Civil War, uh, coming together of the nation after it was divided by the Civil War. Um, I'm sure we're going to hit on the other, you know, the expansion west, of course, is the main theme. Uh, And it does a very good job with the cast of characters that is laid out, in that it is looking at really all the various aspects. It's not just one of those shows where it's just uh, the guys on the, you know, the, the... the equivalent of the day of the blue collar guy, low level guy just working, pushing through on the railroad, which, you know, it's very fun to learn about them, but it, whenever you do a, a show, or more like I should say a movie about that, you don't get the overall picture that well. Inversely, you could look at the big guys of history, i.e., uh, the equivalent of if you do a story on a war, you follow the general because you can get the overall picture much better. But then you don't get the small stuff. This, luckily, it's taking advantage of the fact that it's a series. And therefore, it's looking at both. Both the low-level guys actually digging the trench of the railroad, uh, the mid-level people. Uh, uh, we have a surveyor and his wife, who, you know, died, but hey. They had, you know, the mid-level people equivalent. And, of course, we have the guy that runs and owns, in this case, the Union Pacific Railroad. <coughs> Played by... Colm Minet? Minet? Uh, once again, I am really horrible at saying that. At, 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 uh, at names. Uh, a little bit of phlegm in the throat, too, as well today. He plays uh, Thomas Doc Durant. I forget if this is based on actual guy or it's one of those. It's a collection of all the various robber barons of the day. But he plays the, uh, the guy that runs the railroad. And he does a fantastic job of it. Uh, he really is... It's very much like um, There Will Be Blood. He's basically kind of playing that guy to a degree. Uh, he also just plays the asshole very, very well. If you've seen Con Air, you know what we're, you know what we're kind of talking about. Uh, but he's very over the top in his performance, and it's a good way over the top. Uh, he really imbues it. And in fact, it, this, it ends with him just sitting in the back of his... Uh, the, the pilot ends, I should say, sitting in the back of his private train, talking to literally no one. This going on about how you know a hundred years from now people will will say he's the villain, say he's this you know a greedy guy, but he then asks us, the audience, hundred years in the future, actually well, more than a hundred, but uh, you know, would our railroad, you know, the the thing that still is really kind of still the core of our economy, it still moves more freight than most other things. Uh, would it ever have been built without people like him? Uh, and it's a damn good monologue. He gives a very damn good performance when he's with the other actors. He's always being an asshole, but you know, that's that's his thing. He he plays the angry asshole quite well. Hmm. Of course, our main protagonist is uh, Cullen Bohannon. I don't know. I'm reading the IMDb. I don't think they said his name fully in the uh, in the pilot, so. Uh, but he's played by uh, Anson Mount, who I could have swore was when I saw the previews. Was I was like, is that Josh Brolin? He looks a lot like Josh Brolin, really. 
But, uh, in fact, I guarantee that's why he was cast. Because somebody saw, uh, True Grit. <laughs> uh, but he's really our main protagonist. He's kind of out on a mission for revenge. Actually, you think he's finished his mission for revenge. It, it, it literally, a series starts with him, a uh, soldier, going into a church to confess, and it turns out it's him, him, and he shoots a shoulder, soldier in the head, right in the confessional. Because apparently, something bad had happened in Meridian, where he's from. His wife is apparently, we get the impression that he was, she was raped and killed. And he then looks like he goes off to, I don't know, work on a railroad. You think it's that he's just completed his quest for revenge finally, and he's just going to escape. At the very end of the episode, it was very surprising that it was another character we were introduced, and I kind of suspected this guy wasn't going to stick around. Uh, Ted Levine, uh, who, of course, is probably most people are going to know him as uh, Captain Stottlemyre from Monk or Buffalo Bill from Silence of the Lambs. Uh, he plays another great over-the-top performance. Uh, he basically is the guy running the work camp. And I always say that these guys are the the pilot character. Where you bring in a... It's basically you bring in a big-name actor. Or, you know, not, not a big, big-name actor, but a, an actor that people recognize or will attract people in uh, to, to kind of build up the cast. Somebody you probably couldn't actually afford... The, the put in with for the whole series, but you burn him in uh, and only get rid of him the first episode. This is kind of the hook to get people in and also to add tension, which is what I thought they were going to do with Stephen Lang at first on the Terra Nova, but I digress on that. Uh, yes, yeah, so you go through, they, he kind of does a back and forth for a while with uh, uh, Ted's character there, uh, which even the audience is doesn't realize that he is actually there to kill him, that he was part of the group that had raped his wife. And of course it ends with Ted's character. I forget his name. Even though I'm looking at the IMDB page right now, his name's not even listed on here. <laughs> what his character's name is, that is. Uh, she, uh, he uh, is basically, he catches on to uh, Cullen way before Cullen makes his move, and he basically reveals that there was a sergeant that was actually in charge that had basically done the raping and killed his wife. He saw his wife had committed suicide afterwards. But he's killed by Common's character, Elam. Elam? Uh, uh, right before he's got the opportunity to... Well, he wasn't going to really say the name anyway, but he's, he's killed. That was established earlier through Lev's, uh, Ted's character killing one of Elm's workmates that they're the guys that basically did the ditch on the road or on the tracks uh, and you kind of actually you kind of were expecting that as soon as I saw that set up I was like I know Common's going to come and slit his throat or stab him in the back or shoot him one of those things I was I saw that one coming so the tension was not exactly there at the end but you didn't see the whole I guess, rape thing? I don't know. Uh, there's also, and I forget their characters' names, but there's a surveyor who is killed off after, like, two or three scenes. He's apparently been going out, gathering the, and plotting out how they're going to lay out the tracks and all that. But he is, att they're attacked by Indians, his wife escapes with the maps, it turns, it looks like the maps are going to be a significant thing in this series. Or at least for a short-term arc, are going to all be about getting hold of these maps that are very valuable in order to lay out the tracks. And it also looks like they're going to have... They haven't been introduced really in this character. I mean, it looks like they were there, but that we weren't really introduced to them as characters. But a few um, Cheyenne characters. Uh, I see them listed on here. It looked like in the, next, in the following episode there's going to be more concentration on them. So it's really a very large cast, and they're really not all stuck together yet. In, in this episode, really, other than Common and uh, Common's character, uh, Elm and Cullen, are the only two that look like they're together. And it looks like from now on, they're kind of be kind of stuck together. Cullen now, no, they they're kind of the only two people they can trust because of the murder of Ted's character. But you have. You don't know how everyone else is going to play out. You have other minor characters. There's a couple of Irish entertainers that are going around. 
and I can guarantee you, based on this already, you're going to see a couple other minor characters. This looks like it's almost going to be like another Deadwood-ish kind of show, where you're going to have people come in, die or leave, and all that. Uh, there is a strong feeling of Deadwood in this, in fact. Kind of like this is their Deadwood replacement. She was off the air for a few years. We need a new Western, which you were expecting, actually, when Deadwood was around, you were expecting to see more Western series, but... Hey, uh, what else to talk about? Uh, there's very good at looking at the themes of the series. Really, and it seems to really be going into the the themes of that history, that period. Uh, they talk a lot about the corruption, but a, a lot of it is the old school corruption. Now, I think probably for a lot of people, for those of you again who don't, who have not seen all my videos where I may have mentioned in the past, uh, I have a master's in public policy, a BA in political science, so I study a lot of political science, of course, political scandals and all that stuff. Uh, so, I know today it's much more complicated how money gets moved around when it comes to political corruption dealings. Yeah, there's some of that old-fashioned, it just drops off, you know, with cash and congressmen decide to hide it in their freezer. Uh, but it's normally much more complicated, uh, semi-legal even in, in uh, many cases, but in this, it really goes and shows you how that old school corruption kind of worked. How he would, we have in this character, uh, Doc, kind of goes right up to a senator and hands him a bunch of stocks, uh, and then kind of also points out as the senator's trying to negotiate how uh, he knows the senator had bought up land that they're subsidizing to uh, that's going to go right by the railroad. That's going to become, of course, very valuable. Uh, again, as you know. A lot of people will see that, I think, as commentary on how corruption works today. I'd say, no, it's much more complicated, much more complex, and not as straightforward as that. We have complicated corruption, <laughs> which is supposed to be such a very uncomplicated thing. But uh, that's my own political digression there. Uh, but... What else? Oh, of course, there's also a bit of a Gran Torino aspect. And I, I think people, oh, there are going to be people that are going to watch this, the same reason why a lot of people liked watching Gran Torino. There's, some, for some reason, there's an incredible attraction to watching other people be incredibly racist. I cannot explain it. Uh, I remember when Gran Torino was out, everyone was saying, you know, oh, it's so awesome! Uh, uh, Clint Eastwood has spends the entire movie making fun of Asians. People thought it was great because of that. Um, I thought it was great because of the story, but uh, yeah, there's an I I can't explain it. Maybe it's because that they sub people kind of want to say this type of stuff sometimes, but they can't. Um, I hear enough of it from my grandfather, but it it is historically accurate. You know, a couple generations ago, people really did talk race very racist, like rather commonly. They just kind of said it. Uh, I can see it whenever I go to my grandpa, uh, my grandfather. He's not racist, but he uses some language that you would swear he was a clan member sometimes. Yet he's had black friends and such. It's weird. It's it's a weird generational thing. But uh, I I have a feeling some people are gonna like this show because of that. So I'm making that prediction now. So I want to see later on if anyone's picking up on that. If, if anyone is seeing anyone get excited about this show, and like the first thing they talk about is the racist uh, conversations people have and the racist stuff they talk about. Keep an eye on that. Keep an eye out with the other people that watch this show. See if that's like one of the first things they talk about or the things they seem to really like. I've, I'm picking up on this, I think. There's an element there somewhere where people like to see other people being racist. It could be my own false perceptions there, but po comment on here if you see anyone do that. Cause I, I'm curious if it's me just having one or two people that I know that are kind of like that, or if this is an actual thing. Uh, but other than that, I think it's going to be a very interesting show. It looks very, it looks historically very accurate. It looks fairly violent. Uh, it looks like we're going to get you know, some elements of action in there. Uh, I still feel like we don't have a pure action series nowadays. Maybe, you know, Burn Notice is about the closest I think I can think of. 
Uh, hell, even Battlestar Galactica started dropping their action episodes, really. It became a rarity. But, uh, we're gonna, it looks like it, we'll, we'll at least have some gunfights, even though they'll probably be like two seconds long in a series like this. But it, it, great characters. And that's what you come to watch this show for. It's a character driven show. Uh, and so far, they've got some really over the top performances. And they draw you right in. I will probably be watching this. Like I said, I'm watching The Walking Dead every Sunday anyway. The show is it goes so well with that. You're you're in the mood for that type of show. So I'll probably continue to watch this. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Did you guys think it was a crappy show? Did you guys hated it? Did you guys love it as well? Were you like meh? Were you like um, I just clicked on a random I just clicked on a random video and. I listened to some guy rant for 15 minutes. I have no idea what he's talking about. You tell me. Comments a ho. Signing off. See you guys some other time. Oh, yeah. Uh, quick channel news. I should be seeing this weekend. Take uh, Keep an eye out for my review of Immortals. I plan on seeing that this Friday. So I know I've been a rather sketchy when it comes to doing videos this past couple weeks, so that's because, well, there hasn't been anything to really talk about. Well, signing off for now. Bye.